This happened in 2015. I had just moved to a small house far from my hometown the year before, so I was still getting used to the area and hadn't met many people yet. I worked from home as well, which made it even harder. Anyway, for Christmas, I had no plans at all. My family was too far, and I didn't have enough vacation time to go out and see them. So this was actually going to be my first Christmas alone. On Christmas Eve, I stayed up working, figuring I'd just get ahead on some things so I didn't have to worry about doing anything on Christmas Day. I was working in the living room, listening to music as well. Through it, I heard something coming from outside. I pulled out one of the earbuds and listened, but didn't hear anything else. So I got up and looked around. With my earbuds in, it was hard to know what direction it came from, but I was pretty sure it was outside the house, not inside. I looked out the back window, not seeing anything. Then I moved to the front window and again saw nothing. But then I looked out the front door. On the porch were a set of shoe prints in the snow. They led right up to my doorstep and then back out to the driveway. There was no mail dropped off or anything at all on the porch, just the shoe prints. It was really strange and made me feel a little anxious not knowing why anyone would be walking up to my doorstep at 11 p.m. on Christmas Eve. I made sure the door was locked and went back to work, then got in bed soon after. It was a bit strange waking up on Christmas morning, feeling like it was any other day. I brewed a cup of coffee and sat on my chair to watch TV. I think I spent the whole morning just sitting there and watching shows and movies. I gave my parents a call and talked to them for a bit, but that was really about all I did. I thought about going out, but it was really cold, and the wind was really strong, so I just stayed in for the day. By 6 p.m., I had basically done nothing all day and made some dinner, planning on going to bed early, but then I heard something outside the shuffling sound of footsteps in the snow coming toward the front door. I stayed quiet, knowing nobody should be here. After a few seconds, the footsteps sounded again, walking away from the house. I went up and checked, seeing almost an identical scene to what I saw the previous night. After that, I forced myself to stay up later. I kept my eyes open, until probably around 10 o'clock before, I guess, I fell asleep on the couch. I remember getting really tired and trying to stay up, but I didn't plan on falling asleep out there. When I woke up, the TV was still on, flashing light throughout the dark room. I sat up and paused it, then got up to go to my bedroom. As I walked down the hallway though, my eyes instantly locked on my bedroom door. It was open but I knew I always kept it closed. I walked over and pushed it open wider, then flicked on the light. Wet shoe prints were scattered around the floor, going to and from the window. In a complete state of shock, I spun around and turned on the hallway. Light, now seeing more shoe prints going down toward the living room. I followed them, but they stopped right outside the living room, looking like they turned and went back right after seeing me on the couch. The shoe prints were nowhere else in the house. Police did what they could, but if I'm being honest, they weren't of much help. The current theory is that the man had come by the previous two nights to see if I was home after not answering the door, though he likely thought I was away for the holidays. I know it's likely that he only broke into my house to rob me, but still, it's extremely disturbing, especially since I was at home sleeping when it all happened. Whoever it was, though, they never came back. Last December, I traveled across the country to meet my parents and siblings for Christmas. My parents had a decent-sized house, so we would usually just all stay there and sleep on the couch 
or in the spare bedrooms. That being said, I didn't rent any hotels, even for the drive. It was 10 hours long, but I just didn't see a need in stopping halfway there and wasting a whole night. I left early on the 23rd, planning it out to get to the house around dinner time. As I started the drive, snow was lightly coming down. Nothing crazy, but enough to cause a bit of traffic. This went on for a few hours, until it suddenly started pouring down. It happened over just 30 minutes, going from a very light downfall to an extremely heavy storm. Along with the winds, it was nearly impossible to see anything in front of me. Most other cars started to pull off to the side of the road, but I really wanted to keep going. I drove in these horrible conditions for the better part of an hour, having a few close calls before deciding enough was enough. I pulled into a motel and sat in the parking lot, waiting for the snow to clear up. There were a lot of other cars in the parking lot, but I think most were probably trying to wait it out like I was. But as the sun started to set, there was no chance of that happening anytime soon. I reluctantly went in and got a room. I went to my room and lay down on the bed. It was around eight o'clock at this point, and I figured I'd just sleep now and see if it was clear in a few hours. I set an alarm on my phone for 11 o'clock, then passed out. But when I woke up, I immediately knew something was wrong. I turned and looked at my phone. Seeing it was just before 2 a.m. my alarm didn't go off, I quickly got out of bed and ran up to the window. The parking lot was almost empty now, but it was still snowing pretty bad. I sat back on the bed, and after some thinking, I decided to take the loss and just spend the rest of the night there and hope for the best in the morning. I laid down, closing my eyes, but now that I was more calm, something caught my attention. A cold breeze blowing through the room and the clear sound of wind. I sat up, seeing the window at the end of the bed was cracked open. I got up and shut it, but I was almost positive it was closed when I went to bed. It's something I definitely would have noticed, being that there was a whole storm outside. A rush of adrenaline went through me as I started to worry. I faced the rest of the room. Now, looking into the dark and standing still, listening for anything. Then, I slowly walked around, checking for anything missing or any signs that someone had been inside. I didn't see or find anything until I went to check out the peephole. That's when I noticed that both locks on the door were now open someone had unlocked it from the inside. Blood rushed from my face as I locked the door and backed away, thinking through every possible horrifying scenario that I could be caught in right now. I started putting my things back into my bag and getting ready to leave. But then there was a sudden shake of the door handle. I stared at it with wide eyes seeing the handle move back and forth like they were trying to force it open. Then it went silent. I waited for a long couple of minutes before I slowly and quietly crept toward the door to check if it was safe to make a run for my car. I looked out the peephole, seeing a man leaning against the door like he was listening. I was frozen, but he must have heard something because only a few seconds later, he rushed away from the door. I spent no time waiting, leaving the room soon after and getting in my car, pulling out and leaving the motel. I got lucky as nobody else was on the roads and they seemed to have just been plowed. I drove through the storm until I got to my parents' house, taking much longer than it should have. What that man was trying to do I can't even begin to think of. They had obviously been in the room while I was sleeping and unlocked the door. But what they wanted 
and why they had to come back to my room. I just don't know. But if I hadn't woken up when I did, and stayed asleep for just a minute longer, I might have never made it to my parents' house. Two years ago, I spent Christmas with my roommate. We were both in college and were splitting rent on a small home in the suburbs outside of the campus. Neither of our families apparently were really big on Christmas, and we were also kind of broke. So we stayed home for winter break. We still did a bit of decorating and had gotten each other some cheap little gifts so we could outside the door, startling me. I hesitated for a moment, then cautiously opened the door to see what had caused the noise. To my surprise, there was a small package on the doorstep, wrapped in plain brown paper. It had no label or indication of who it was from, but curiosity got the better of me, and I brought it inside. I carefully unwrapped the package to reveal an old, worn-out book. Its cover was tattered, and the pages were yellowed with age. There was a handwritten note inside that simply said, for those who wander. Feeling a bit uneasy about the mysterious gift, I put the book aside and tried to go back to my evening. As I continued watching TV, my mind kept drifting back to the man in the park and the strange package. It was getting late, and I decided to call it a night. When I entered my room, I noticed the book was no longer where I left it. Confused, I searched around but found nothing. That's when I heard a soft whisper, almost like a faint breeze saying, read it. Startled, I turned around, but there was no one there. The voice persisted, urging me to open the book. Feeling a mix of fear and curiosity, I cautiously flipped through its pages. The words on the pages seemed to come alive recounting stories of wanderers who faced eerie encounters during their journeys. As I delved deeper into the tales, I became captivated by the eerie narratives. The stories seemed to reflect my own experiences and surroundings. I couldn't shake off the feeling that the mysterious man in the park and the peculiar book were somehow connected. The night grew darker as I read on immersed in the unsettling stories. The last story was about a lone wanderer who encountered a mysterious figure on Christmas night. The details were eerily similar to my encounter with the man in the park. As I closed the book, the room seemed to shift, and I felt an inexplicable connection to the stories within. The events of that Christmas night left me with an unsettling sense of wonder as if I had become part of the mysterious tales of wanderers. The book, now a haunting reminder, held secrets that continued to linger in the corners of my mind. Window. I jumped back, my heart racing. The shattered glass scattered across the living room floor, and the cold night air rushed in. Panicking, I ran to grab my phone and dialed the police explaining the situation as quickly as I could. While on the phone, I heard the man outside making strange, guttural sounds. It sent shivers down my spine. The dispatcher assured me that help was on the way. But the minutes felt like an eternity as I waited for the police to arrive. From the safety of my room, I could hear the man pacing around the house occasionally tapping on the remaining windows. It was clear that his actions were erratic and unpredictable. I decided to stay hidden and waited for the police to handle the situation. When the police finally arrived, they found the man still lurking around the house. They detained him and began asking questions. I overheard snippets of their conversation through the open window. The man's responses were nonsensical and it became apparent that he was not mentally stable. As the officers took the man away, one of them approached me to get my statement. I explained the events leading up to the unsettling encounter. 
from the park to the mysterious package and the eerie book, the officer advised me to stay vigilant and keep my doors and windows secured. He mentioned that they would investigate further and try to determine the motive behind the man's bizarre behavior. After the police left, I spent the rest of the night cleaning up the broken glass and securing the house. The strange occurrences left me with a lingering sense of unease. The mysterious book, the encounters with the man, and the unsettling tales of wanderers, all intertwined in a bizarre Christmas night that would remain etched in my memory. I stayed locked in the room, anxiously listening as the man outside continued his relentless assault on the windows and then the front door. The rhythmic pounding created a disturbing symphony of chaos that echoed through the house. Fear gripped me, and I dialed 911, providing the operator with a frantic account of the situation. As I described the unfolding events, the man's relentless attempts to breach my home, I could hear his unsettling persistence in the background. The police were on their way, but each moment felt like an eternity as the assaults on the windows and door continued. Finally, the cacophony ceased, replaced by an eerie silence that hung in the air. The arrival of the police was a welcome relief, but the man was nowhere to be found outside. The visible damage, however, told a chilling tale of the relentless onslaught he had unleashed upon my home. The police, after assessing the situation, speculated that the man might have been intoxicated, dismissing the incident as a random act of aggression. They assured me that he likely had no specific reason to target me, but the surreal and erratic nature of his behavior left me unsettled. The cracked window and the door with chunks of wood missing were stark reminders of the potential danger I had narrowly avoided. The police presence provided a sense of security, but the unknown motives behind the man's actions lingered in my mind. As I reflected on that harrowing Christmas night, I couldn't shake the feeling of vulnerability. The randomness of the encounter left me with a haunting awareness of the thin line between safety and danger. It was a nightmarish episode that underscored the importance of vigilance and reinforced the unpredictability of the world around us.